Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Contemporary Economic Issues. Um, just want to explain a few things on your homework assignment. I think most everything is pretty self-explanatory. However, students do have trouble with the production possibilities curve that is on the assignment. I've gone ahead and put um, question eight right here um, uh, on here so that you can take a look at that. And you'll notice a lot of students are kind of confused about what we can say about these points and what these points even represent. So let's do a real quick lecture. Um, and uh, we'll kind of talk about the production possibility curve and what it means. So if you've gone ahead and listened to the podcast, which I would suggest you do first, um, it talks about um, opportunity costs, trade-offs, sunk costs, um, we're also going to talk about the allocation of resources. So in the podcast and in that information that you got and what you're reading, we know that economics is the study of choices and how we allocate our resources. Because we don't have and can't have everything, we have to allocate our resources. So in economics, we look at how do we allocate our resources in order to be uh, happy or to what we say in economics to maximize our utility, right? For people, we do things that make us happy, increase our utility. As countries, we increase our utility in order to promote growth, okay? So we look at the production possibilities model to show all of these things. I'll scroll back up here, right? To show costs, trade-offs, allocation of resources, right? Allocation means how we divvy up things. Um, and we want to know how can we do that? So you could make a production possibilities curve of, um, you know, eating certain types of food and exercise and that type of stuff. What would be the best use of your, uh, your time and your efforts in doing that? You know, should you eat... Um, you know, how many donuts could you eat in a sitting and how many miles could you run? Uh, you could, you could do something that would be kind of dumb, but I mean, you could do something like that. Um, so when we create a production possibilities curve, and this is the one I used right here for your, for your homework, um, we assume only two goods can be produced, um, and we can, we can plot those things out, right? So if we were to plot, uh, for example, let's imagine a, a society can produce iPhones and corn. We say, well, if they were to produce, do nothing but produce iPhones, they could produce, you know, 14 million iPhones um, and zero, you know, tons of corn. Or they could do eight, you know, million tons of corn um, and uh, or any combination in between okay but they can't allocate all of their resources to corn and make any phones right they also can't make 18 million iPhones right and they also can't produce 10 million uh, tons of corn they just don't have the resources to do that right it's just like you I think I always tell students think that you want to make a certain amount of cookies you can't make more than what you have the ingredients to make. Um, it's impossible, right? Now, you could make more by getting a, a better job and making more money and buying uh, the resources for it uh, or using, you know, becoming more um, technologically advanced and increasing certain ways to make, um, you know, cookies and things like that. But we're not going to get into that right now. We'll get into that later, right? So we say anything along the production possibilities curve, right, along this curve is efficient. Anything underneath it, right, if we were to work at this point, um, is inefficient, right? And anything beyond what we're able to make is impossible, okay? So we can look at opportunity cost mathematically. So, for example, if I were to say hey, I can make 14 iPhones, you know, or zero corn. What's the opportunity cost of moving from A to B? Well, it's costing me, 
right here, here's my cost. What could I be doing? Well, now I'm making 12 phones and 2 million tons of corn or bushels of corn. And what, what could I have been doing? Well, I could have been making 2 million more iPhones or 2 more iPhones. I'm putting it in millions, sorry. Well, what could I be doing? Well, I'm making corn. What could I have been doing? Well, instead of making corn, I could have made two more iPhones, right? And if we move on to question two, what's the opportunity cost of moving from B to C? So what, what does that cost us? Well, now we're going from 12 to, it looks like nine, right? Well, it's costing us iPhones again, right? We're making, we're gaining. Remember, cost is what you're giving up. Not what you're gaining, what you're giving up. Okay? And so that will help you with the homework a little bit. Um, I'm going to probably go up. I think we're, we're kind of done um, with that. So let me move back up to your homework, and hopefully this explains it a little bit better. So now we can look at it mathematically, right? I'm going to do the first one for you. What can we say about point C, B, and A, right? And we're making trucks or we're making boats, right? And you might be asking yourself, what the heck do I care? I don't I, I know. This is just a representation of, the, it could be anything. It could be uh, providing police officers or providing uh, teachers. It could be um, spending money on uh, defense, Right. Or spending money on um, social welfare programs for, you know, um, in need families. Right. Because these are issues we actually face. And we know we can't have the best military and the best welfare system at the same time. Why? Because we don't have the resources to do that. So something has to something has to be given up. Right. And this is why I am always bringing economics into the political spectrum. It's because we only have so many resources. We only have so many social workers. We only have so many teachers. We only have so many soldiers. We only have so many lawyers and doctors. And when we move our resources to provide more of something else, we have to take away from somewhere else. And that becomes our cost. Most people think about it in terms of money, but it's not. If we provide more um, border security, for example, where do we get those border security agents? Where do we pull those people from, right? We pull them from um, police forces, local police units. We pull um, people who would become teachers or accountants or lawyers, right? So it costs us those other things, right? Okay, so let's take a look at A. This Point, what can we say about points C, B, and A? We can say that each one of these points is efficient. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the correct amount of trucks and boats that we can make. It just means that we would be working efficiently, right? So maybe right now we are efficient with the resources that we have providing, um, let's say, uh, social social workers and providing border security agents border patrol agents maybe we are working but maybe maybe we're not right that's uh, productively efficient but maybe we're not allocatively efficient meaning we're not allocating the right combination so should we be right and this is where people get into arguments because some people would say well i think we should have more border patrol agents and some people would say uh, no, I think we should have more um, social workers, right? And right now, we're having that problem with the police, right? Um, you hear a lot about, you know, defund the police. And really what these people are saying is they're saying, let's spend less on um, policing and let's spend more money and resources on social workers. And of course, right, people are, are going to be literally up in arms over this uh, this fight. How should we? Um, how should we be um, allocating our resources for those things? And really, when you break it down, it's not a Republican or Democrat issue. It really becomes a social issue of, as a society, what should we be doing with our resources? 
Should we be providing more police enforcement or should we be pr providing more social workers? Okay, so that's really the, that's that's the argument. And then I think in both cases, people mean well on both sides. We just need to decide what's best for society. So we would say those are efficient. What can we say about point D? Well, right, I just told you, so I'm not going to answer that question for you. What can we say about point E? I've also told you that if we moved from point C to point A, what would this cost us? So if we moved from point C, hold on one second, I'm going to, uh, maybe, erase all of this just so I can help you out here a little bit better. It's getting a little cluttered. All right. If we were to move... Still has my pen on there. There we go. I'll just use red. There we go. If we were to move from point C to point A, um, what would that do for us? Okay, um, so we're going to move from this point right here, and we're going to move to this point. What I want to know is what does it cost us, and I want a numerical answer here. What does it literally cost us to move from point C to point A? Okay, I hope that helps and gives you a little bit of um, information on what I'm looking for. Um, the next question says, should we move from point C to point A? Um, I'm going to revert back to, let's imagine that instead of trucks and boats, we have social workers and police officers. So should we move from more police officers to less police officers and more social workers or not? Right? Yes, no, or is it unclear? Right? So think about instead of trucks and boats, think about it from the perspective of police officers and social workers. Um, is the answer unclear? Maybe it's not unclear to you, um, but as a society. Think about as a society, okay? Uh, I'm going to end that there because I'm taking way too much of your time, and uh, I'll see you later. Take care.